What we're looking at here is the body of my flux wing. It's a bit of weird, complete carbon fiber is designed so the wing connections come off easily in a crash. Now, when I flew this last time, we had pretty big problems with video noise and it is a bit of a nightmare and I have to say this is not my finest wiring ever but what I intend to do to see if a small thing will help is soldering this capacitor onto the well the XT60 terminals somewhere um, I guess where it joins the ESC is probably the best place if that will fit we'll figure that out okay a quick bit of soldering and uh, finding some clear hit treat later we have the capacitor in it, so I just need to now put this back together and try it. Fortunately, I should just be able to hold on to this and try it in the house just to see what we've got. I really don't want to look at that wiring because, well, it needs to be completely redone. I don't want to touch it if I don't have to. So let's try it with this first, see what we get. Okay, so here's my screen. I'm going to try and raise the throttle. If you're doing this inside the house, I highly suggest you wait till your significant other is not there because they will not appreciate the loudness that these things produce. So, I'm going to hold that. Well, that was a lot better. That was absolutely rock solid. The only thing I've done is, is put it in upside down. Let me see if I can show you while I zoom this up a bit. Right, ready? Full throttle. Now. Yeah, we've got a few lines, but the OSD stayed uh, good and uh, it didn't all go to absolute crap, which is good. And a mid-range throttle, let's go just a little bit. We've still got some diagonal banding, but it doesn't look as bad to me. So, it worked just holding it. Will it fly and be okay with this capacitor added? Slightly worried because it means I have to launch it again. I got okay at this last time but the wind seems to be doing weird things. I think it's coming from that direction, which is like, oh, I really don't want to launch it into the field, but they have no choice. We'll see what happens. While the wing waits to get a satellite lot, let's have a quick word from our sponsor today, which is PCBWay. PCBWay can prototype and assemble your PCBs for you. If you design your own PCBs, then you probably know this already. Now, I don't have much of a clue about PCB design myself, but with open source hardware projects being more popular, you'll often be able to get a Gerber file which contains the PCB design, send this to PCBWay and get your own PCBs made without needing to know anything about the design process. In fact, PCBWay have projects that people have shared with them and you can get Gerber files or just order the PCB directly from the site with the author getting a kickback from it. But it's not just PCBs. CNC machining, laser cutting, sheet metal bending, 3D printing and injection molding are just some of the extra things they can do and the materials that are way out of reach for most hobbyists. Did you know it's PCB Way's 11th anniversary? From now until July the 18th, they are having a bunch of special offers on. Look out for special discounted prices on PCB services, 3D printing and CNC, coupons and a lucky draw with a chance to win some exciting gifts. Check it all out at PCBWay.com. Now, on with the video. Well, that was yet another terrifying launch in which it managed to talk roll itself over, but I managed to just about to correct it, bring it back up, set it into return to home so I can get back. Now, I hadn't put the DVR on until I got back to the goggles in which I found itself doing like 100% throttle coming on back to me, which is not too bad. It, it came back and the OSD stayed there. So all good so far. I was having a slight debate with myself actually. What is the difference to, between manual and acro in iNav? Obviously Horizon snaps it back to center and Horizon I don't particularly like flying on. It's quite good to, you know, let go of the plane and, and let it do stuff if you're messing around. But for actual smooth flying, I much prefer either manual or acro. Having since looked up the definition, Acro provides some stabilisation against unwanted rotation, so if the wind is catching your wing and pushing it certain ways, it will try and correct that. While manual is much more akin to the old-fashioned ways of just literally having your servo inputs and having to do that for yourself. I have to say, I couldn't see much difference between it on the day, but I had more of a side wind, so 
my speed going sort of out and doing some distance and then coming back was very similar so there wasn't really that much wind blowing me around too much. Obviously one of the things I needed to test was a full speed run to make sure the OSD stayed put. It would seem to if we look back at the DVD of when it was doing RTH but I wanted to do this manually as well so I decided to line up, go down this field, do a full speed run and then try it from the other directions and see how it was. So we're going up with full throttle and you can see something weird is happening to the wing, not something I'm familiar with. It is jumping up and down, which is uh, quite a weird sort of thing for it to happen. I'm I'm trying to figure out if this is like, is the wind catching this weird? Normally this wing really does cut through the wind quite well, but let's have another go, see if it does the same this way. And the answer is yep. So yeah, we won't be doing that again until we land and see what the issue is. Not that this stopped me flying it around generally, the wing was flying well, it was a pretty calm day which is always a bit nicer. So yeah, I just went off, flew around, explored, just had a, a good time flying around really. With that said I didn't do the full battery, I thought I'll land it because I want to see if I could figure out what the problem is, why is this waggling all over when I go full throttle and then with the intention of putting a new battery on and doing some more flights and seeing what would happen. I felt this was a pretty smooth landing but this thing just doesn't flare, it just slows down, stalls, you land it and then the wings fly off. At the field I didn't record my thoughts about what I thought was the problem with the waggling, instead I got on with attempting to launch it, which turned out badly. The first instance it just sort of turned over again and I thought I'll go much lighter and this ended up with me kind of stalling it mid-air and trying to get the throttle back on and just wants to turn over and kill itself. At that point it broke. Okay so first question why was the wing waggling about like that? Now it's a little bit hard to definitely put my finger on it because although I thought I had a fairly smooth approach for landing because the wings fly off as they tend to if there's a little bit of anything going on with it I couldn't tell if this was down to the landing or this is what happened. But what I basically had is the ESC here flapping around. It, it was on this little bit of sticky Velcro and it had left the sticky bit behind. So this was then flapping around. And I think that could have caused the problem with the wing basically with this moving, causing it to shake about and stuff. The only problem is that last attempt at landing when it went down and crashed, basically took this wire off. So that has become desoldered from the ESC. Now although I was fairly happy that we basically fixed the problem with the ESC by just popping on uh, a nice capacitor, seemed to do a great job, I was slightly skeptical about it working but it really did a good job. We still had a little bit of diagonal banding but we didn't seem to make it worse by going full throttle in that. So I thought about fixing this and there is another bit on the this to fix. As you can see these are the joints where the two bits of carbon will release if you hit it hard enough. If I just take these wings off a sec, then I notice what we had is some looseness in this and indeed this has come out of its, uh, its bit so I need to glue that back. That could also cause a bit of problem. So some fix to do there. Now although I will fix this ESC, I was uh, lucky enough that Secure also sent me this guy. This is called a 28120 it's got uh, a 4 amp bec, it runs AM32 and it is a 120 amp ESC. It's the one I talked about in the last video about, oh I noticed this has some nice big capacitors on it. Uh, but I thought to myself, yeah that fits, why not? I've got it, let's use it and see how well it performs. It's already all soldered up ready to use. I just need to plug that in then, put a battery in that one and uh, plug this in we're ready to go so yeah I'll fix that over ESC um, but I'll put this one in for next time I think that should be fun. If only I can come up with a way of consistently being able to launch this wing I'll be happier but tune in next time and we'll see how this other secure ESC goes um, but yeah video problems make sure you've got yourself a good capacitor in there to help. Hope that's been helpful I'll catch you next video bye for now.
Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.